Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Welcome to another Gearhead Daydream. So first of all, I would like to apologize because I have not posted anything in a while. I've just been so busy setting up another um, business venture. Um, it's just been a little bit crazy, so it's taken up a lot of my time. A lot of my free time that I used to have where I used to do this. So that's the main reason why I haven't been around. Um, and to be honest, I haven't been able to work on the car as much as I would like. Something happened which has left me with no choice. I have to work on the car, so I thought I would do this video. So what happened? A couple of days ago, I was driving the car, um, going around a roundabout, and all of a sudden, um, I got what I can only sort of describe as a flat tire. Like it, like the car, it just felt like the tires just blown. Um, and the car sort of went jittery and I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. Um, I quickly checked my TPMS, there was no loss in pressure or anything like that, so that was all good. Straight away I knew there was something wrong with the rear end. Luckily I was only a few hundred meters away from my destination, um, so I pulled in, um, got out of the car, looked at the driver's side rear for the British guys, uh, passenger side rear for the American guys, um, and uh, yeah, uh, the camber was ridiculous on the car. So I'll post a photo here, you can see, uh, crazy. And this is a photo of what it's normally like. So you can see the difference. So I knew something was, uh, was wrong. Um, I actually put that down to my workmanship because I had upgraded my camber arms um, to the UPR ones. Um, so I was like, there's no chance in hell that those have broken because, you know, they fill it aluminum, etc, etc. So it must be my workmanship. Um, that's how I sort of thought about it. Um, yeah, so upon further investigation, um, you know, all the nuts were tight, etc. So something was wrong with the camera arm. Had to get recovered home. Car on the recovery truck. Yeah, um, had to get recovered home, got the car up on the lift, and I look, and yeah, you won't believe this. Look, that's the tire, that's the adjustment tire rod for the uh, uh, camera arm. So it clean, it sheared clean off. Look at that, All right? Yeah, sheared clean off. Let me show you some photos. So I'll put them in now. Those are the photos. And then if I show you here, what's going on, uh, you can see that this is the camber arm and that's the aluminium part and just sheared clean off at the, at the sort of um, the, the aluminium part of it. So I had no choice but to uh, replace. So um, yeah, I, I've had to do this. Um, quick story in terms of this is a bit of a repetition if you've not, if you've not seen the uh, unboxing video of the new camber arms that I've gone for um, yeah so I tried to get a hold of camber arms in the UK everybody was saying two to four weeks you know and uh, the ones that I ended up getting the BMR ones were uh, 475 pounds plus delivery but they were two to three weeks out and I just can't wait that long because I want to drive the car. The weather's nice, it's summer. I want to have some fun. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, I went to Summit Racing, saw that they had it in stock, calculated the shipping and the amount of tax that I would get charged. And guys, I ordered it. 48 hours later, they were here, right? And still 50 pounds cheaper. So the supply chain situation in the UK is absolutely dire. This is the main reason why I don't actually even bother going to UK suppliers for, for the Mustang because they're overpriced and they take too long for the stuff that they don't have on the shelves. Um, and I mean, something like this, this sort of situation where I need a part in an emergency, I'm happy to pay a premium, but they just didn't have a complete set. Nobody had a complete set that they could sell me which is frankly ridiculous. And I would have paid a good premium on top of it, you know, because you got to pay to play. But unfortunately, no one was there. So I went on Summit Racing, they got my money. Everybody's happy. Well, I'm happy, Summit are happy, BMR are happy. 
and, and that's it. So this is why I, I can't recommend UK suppliers to anybody ever at all. So some of wrestling came and helped me. So what am I gonna do today? So I need to replace that arm to begin with. Um, I've got the BMR ones and then I'll work on the other one as well and do it. But you, luckily nothing else got damaged. Um, yeah, um, you know, there's a little bit of rubbing on the, ins uh, on the inside of the wheel uh, where the, it rubbed against the shock mount a little bit, but the CV boot is good, no rubbing issues. Um, uh, everything else was uh, was okay, which was a worry of mine. So, so it's not too bad, but just be mindful that if you've got the old UPR uh, rear adjustable camera arms, they could fail. Quite a few of the guys said that it's a common issue. I didn't know about it, but now I do know about it. Um, uh, but to be honest, fair play to UPR. Uh, they've agreed to send me some replacements which are upgraded made of, made of better materials etc etc but again I can't wait that long so I bought the BMR ones which I'm gonna put on and when the UPR ones come I'll actually do a comparison video of the old and the new and why this one failed so moving next I'll show you the BMR ones and we'll just start disassembling and get on with it right so we're gonna do this 19 little deep socket because I like deep and 19 mil here as well for a nut. This is for the UPR one, so your stock one might be different. Um, refer to the manual. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Oh my god, that's tight. Oh, look at how. break disc nice so to get this one I just use a torque wrench that I have which is ratcheting it's 3 8 managed to get my deep socket in there and just makes it easy to just get in and do it really so cracked it loose now I'm just gonna undo it y'all can watch me if you want it's not very exciting but you know It's basically gone like this so it would have been on the car like that and it's taken a bump or something over time and it's just gone pop like this which kind of makes sense so. okay so that's the old it's a shame you know. but it is what it is so we're gonna reuse this at the top. It's not a problem. One of the things I'm gonna do is uh, set the length to get me in the right sort of, well, I can't even do that because I undid those. So I can't do that actually. Um, yeah, we'll just, I'm just gonna have to eyeball it for now um, and take it from there. Yeah, let's do this. Right, so this is this is it. So I figured out. I, I took it to the car actually. Um, so I figured it out. Um, this little area here is there, so the half shaft doesn't rub against this link, right? So this one 
is going to go on like so. Let me see if you can see that. Let me adjust the camera. God dang, every time. So it's going to go in like this. This being the body. This is the American passenger side, British driving side. This is going to go there. Can you see that? Yep. And then this area here is where the half shaft can have a bit more clearance. So that's how it's going to go on. So you have the two torque specs. I'm just going to confirm those, read them. So this one is 85 foot pounds and this one is 76 foot pounds. And then this is an adjuster. So it allows you to loosen this and make adjustments to the to the camber so what they suggest is if you're going to do it often if you're going to be adjusting your your camber frequently then torque this to 10 foot pounds don't apply um blue locking thread compound but if not then uh, torque it to 14 foot pounds and apply blue tread rock locker so i'm not gonna apply and, and that's the recommended thing to do uh, 14 foot pounds blue thread locker recommended but i'm not going to do that yet i want this to be on the car first um, so i can get this adjusted and everything and then take it from there um, because after my suspension and everything else is installed the brake disc etc i want to take it to a to a place called suspension secrets and they can properly set the car up and it, and take it from there so yeah that's the other thing I recommend, don't don't cut this off because you know the same thing's gonna keep happening to you. But I think we're good to go. So this is our um, inner. So this one goes through there. So this one goes through there. And then the outers, I've had to take them out again. These are my factory ones, so I didn't throw those away when I did the UPR one. They'll go there in there. So right, let's do this one. And right, so I've got this on there temporarily. I've just put it in basically with the bolts. So as you can see at the top there, that's how it's meant to look. And that's, you see right there is what I mean. With regards, let me show you a better angle. Can you see that, is that better? You can see what I mean by the clearance for the half shaft that's how it's supposed to go on basically um, yeah I hope you can see that like, okay so this will be better so you see how the flat side of the camber arm is facing towards the engine because if they didn't do that there would be a clearance issue with the half shaft so that's the reason for that and yeah you use the factory bolt lines up pretty easily you might have to just sort of lift the, the caliper up a little a touch just to slide that in and now we can just torque it and we're good to go. Right, the other thing they want you to do is this is the differential breather hose. Um, so they want you to um, cable tie this to the speed sensor um, wire. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna do what they've asked me to do really and should be, should be out of the way. I think they're just worried that it will make contact so they just want it out of the way so we'll do that and then we should be good so this is a nylock nut it shouldn't need any thread locker so i'm not going to put any on there actually i'm just going to put a touch a little bit. next we have to do the inner one that's going to be a bit of, i don't know if i can get well, actually, I can get a torque wrench in there, so we'll start doing that up. Getting you guys the best views. That's right. them to spec oh man so 85 foot pounds for the inner bolt is about 115 newton meters 
the only torque wrench that I have that will fit in this space goes up to 112 newton meters. So this is just gonna have to do, and I'll just maybe tighten it a little bit after I'm happy with the, with the wrench. So let's see. Right, so that's done. I'm happy with the inner one now. Now we need to do this to so make sure the big washer is out here and the bolt is there or the nut is there. Got a big boy out for this one, 75 foot pounds. Let's do it. 18 millimeter. Let's do it. get a paint pen to mark everything up just so I know it's all steady right final update it's all on just wanted to talk to you guys over what what I've sort of done um, so I have this gauge uh, which I used which I've used to get a measurement of my other wheel to get this alignment and the ballpark figure sort of thing because they were both at zero camber so now they should just match or be close enough the other things i've done i've tightened this i couldn't get the torque wrench onto it so one of the lessons i've learned is to sort of tighten it before you put this on otherwise there's no space so this is a one of the advice i would give bmr is actually to put this nut head on the other side because then it works like this it doesn't work so it's not not the greatest thing that they've done so i'll make sure when i do the other one um then the nut is facing this way so that's one of the advice i would give to you guys um, i could probably do that right now but i just don't know how everything will behave so i don't really want to do it because i think it's tight enough it should be fine I put paint marks on everything because I just want to make sure it's all tight and nice and it doesn't move. It shouldn't, but just in case, it's all nice and tight and I can monitor it. Likewise, I put the paint mark here, which you guys saw, and the paint mark on there as well because I like to sort of visually check after a while. So that's the install. Um, it took me a lot longer than I thought it would, but that's just because I was being careful, extra careful. Um, but I think I think we're good. So now I've got to do the other wheel, and then yeah, we'll be done. So I just wanted to add a quick little bit onto the video because <clears throat> I think it's important you should know. I've just re I've just removed the second camber arm. I thought it would be fine, but it's not. It's actually started to fail as well. It's only a matter of time before it goes. So let me show you guys. I don't know if you can see. You see that shiny little bit there? that's the metal starting to split already so it's in the same spot um guys if you've got the old version of this upr um, rear adjustable camera arms take them off i've done my bit it's up to you what you want to do next but to be honest upr have been good they have made a strengthened version which they have released and i think the new version is okay but if you have this particular set just get rid of them it's simple as that um i want to make this the end of the video so that's it any questions get in touch same steps on the other side and uh, yeah i'll be happy to answer them have a good day bye bye